Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to color this pansy image. Now I did this before on colored paper with colored pencils, but I thought I would do it again um, with the watercolor pencils on white paper, just because it is a little bit different of a technique. Um, we're also going to use um, one of the colors from my homemade bottle cap watercolor palette, and I'm also going to show you what it's going to look like after we're, we're done with the watercolor pencils, how you can deepen up the color with regular colored pencils as well. So there's a lot of techniques you're going to learn today, but I urge you to try it with things you have on at home already so if you don't have watercolor pencils you can do your underpainting with watercolors um, or you could try water regular colored pencils with Gamzol or odorless mineral spirits or something like that so you know please feel free to try it with whatever you have because you might get the look that you're going for that way so what I've done here is I've stamped my image with waterproof ink on um, a piece of hot press watercolor paper it, it just it's a lot easier to use the watercolor paper with um, watercolor pencils it just um, it really does make it work a lot better. And I'm going in, and this is, and I mentioned this before, I took pieces of washi tape so I could just figure out what sets um, my watercolor pencils were from. And these are the Prima watercolor pencils with a polka dot uh, tape there. Those are all from the basic set. And I have one from the spring and fall set. That's this uh, green number 58. And, um, and they're, they're really nice. I'm really enjoying working with them. They remind me a lot of the Derwin artists line of pencils so if you have those pencils already you probably wouldn't find these that useful but I would recommend like the skin and hair tones just because it is kind of hard to uh, to get the skin those really light neutral colors um, I know I did like uh, I illustrated a book and I used my intense pencils for the most part but when I needed to do the skin and hair well these these skin and hair tones weren't available back then I used a few of the the lighter set uh, pencils from the Derwent set I wish I had the um, the Primas when I was doing that project. So, you know, you want to make sure you, you know, especially if budgets are, are a concern, that you don't duplicate your supplies um, or that you get the most mileage out of the supplies that you do have. But um, since I'm in the wonderfully lucky opportunity that I can try a lot of these supplies um, because they come from sponsors and whatnot, I would love to, to share with you what I really think about the product so you can make um, educated choices when you go to when you go to shop. Because I get a lot of comments where people are like, um, how is this frugal? You have so many different supplies. And the thing is, if I get asked a lot about a particular product, it means a lot of you guys are considering buying it. If I can go and spend my money where, you know, I'm, you know, I make money off these videos, so, you know, I'll make that money back. I'd rather spend my own money, or if somebody wants to donate it, that's great. Um, and have you guys see it before you go out and spend your money. I think it's, you know, I would rather help you guys like that and um, give you guys an honest review. So, so yeah, I, you know, I do get to try a lot of stuff, and a lot of you guys probably don't think it's very frugal. But if it it's going to help everyone save money and invest wi wisely in their materials, I think. Um, I just enabled myself, didn't I? This is number 80, which is a purple, pretty much a primary purple. And I'm just adding it in the center of each of these areas where I put, well, the center of the flowers, it's kind of on the edge of these uh, darker reddish pink areas here because I want to deepen up that color uh, closer to the center of the flower where there would be more shadow, where there would be like petals kind of overhanging and casting a little bit of a shadow there. This is a, the nice thing about watercolor pencils is that you don't need quite so many. Oops, I forgot to do this guy up here and I forgot the little buds. I'll go and you don't have to do it in a, any particular order either, which is kind of nice. Um, let's put this other color on top there. I find that it seems like the younger petals tend, like the, the flowers aren't completely open yet, tend to be a little bit, a little bit darker. And you know, I'm, I know I'm going to blend this out so I don't have to take too much care with the coloring at this point. Now for the petals, I'm going to use some green. But first let's go in the middle with each of these. I went with yellow in the middle of these. I kind of wish this they had a brighter yellow in the basics collection. Um, but I can always add a little watercolor or other color pencil afterwards. But we're going to, I'm going to do the whole thing in just the regular color pencil first, watercolor pencil first, so you can, um, so you can see. And now let's see, I'm going to, now this is another tip. So when you get a new set of pencils or something, swatch them out because sometimes it's hard to tell from the end of the pencil what the color is actually going to be. So this is number 47. So if I hold it up there, I can see that's a much livelier green than what the end looks like. So I really recommend doing that when you, um, when you get a new set of pencils. Plus it's fun and it kind of takes a little of the pressure off, 
you know, you get a brand new supply and you're like, oh, you know, I don't know what to do. I'm looking at the blank paper. I'm like paralyzed by um, indecision. You know, when you have, you know, just swatching it out makes you use them, makes you try them out and then helps you get to know your pencils. So then you'll kind of get over that fear of using that brand new supply, especially if you have a little bit of a fear that you might be wasting it. I got to tell you, I've been using color pencils and watercolor pencils for a long time and it takes, it takes quite a bit of work to, um, to use them up. And I even bring some of my sets to um, the kids' classes that I teach. And even, I mean, whoops, that was purple. That's, that'll be interesting. I grabbed the wrong pencil. Um, what color was I just using? This is 58. This is more of like a sap green. It's really pretty. Um, so it does take a long time to use these up. That's the one thing I, one of the things I really like. It's probably the thing I prefer to pencils over markers because they last so much longer. So, you know, maybe you've got, you've got a budget right now to buy some supplies, but you're not sure if you're going to have that budget forever. Pencils will last you longer than markers. I will tell you that. It's also, you know, great for kids too, because, you know, other than them dropping them and breaking them, which does shorten their life, you know, if they take care of them, they're not going to dry out. You know, you don't have to worry about them replacing the caps. They're really fantastic. And then I've got this really light color. It is number 44. And I'm just going to do the tips of these, of these, um, these leaves just to give it a little bit of a uh, life. It's so nice outside today. I just walked the dog and it's 45 degrees, but it felt like, it felt like spring was here. The bright sunlight, everything was um, melting. I was like, oh, finally spring is here. I forgot my little, my little petals there. And you'll notice I don't sharpen my pencils that often. I mean, as long as I can get in there, if I know I'm going to go in with a brush and, and blend it around, I don't have to keep my, my pencils really sharp because, um, because I can push it around with my brush. So that's something to consider. But if I was going over this, like say I didn't have colored pencils and I wanted to go over this to get this look and I'm going to go back over it with just the watercolor pencils and not um, dissolve them, you know, then I'd want to sharpen it a bit so I'd have a little more control. So you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Now I want to show you two different techniques here because on this card that I, sh that, I that we did yesterday um, or the other day, we used a pen, a blending pen. And I also want to use a, so I want to show you what that's going to look like here, but then I'm going to show you with a watercolor brush, just so you can, um, so you can kind of decide what, what's best for you. I'll do this one here because, oh good, that little purple kind of blended right away. So the nice thing about the pen is that you've got so much control, especially when you're doing stamped images. Okay, look at that. It's so easy to control. Now to clean it between colors, like if I, you know, I would just go ahead and do all my greens here at once, like if I was going to do the whole thing in this. But to clean it, I'm just um, scribbling it off on a scrap off camera until it goes clear again. Then um, I can go in here and just kind of blend it out. And look how easy that is because you don't have um, out of control water, which I know is a... Um, kind of a pet peeve <laughs> of a lot of you guys. And I can even go and do all the really concentrated areas. And I could even wipe my brush off if I wanted to, but I want it to be pretty bright. So I'm just gonna carry the color out. Okay, so you can see, I mean, it's just like coloring with a marker. It looks an awful lot like a marker too. I'm gonna get those a little bit light with a leftover color. Now, if I wanna go in, and of course I'd scribble that off if I'm going to another color. Now I could also use a watercolor brush. I kind of like this one. It's a uh, it's called the cat's tongue. It has a it has a point, but it's a flat brush. But it kind of has around like a like a round brush point. It's really handy because you can use it both ways. So it's very handy as a uh, tool for stamper. So I, I like to pinch the end just to get off any extra water. Usually not over my paper, over to the side. But I wanted you to see it. And then I'm just gonna go in. And you can see you get a little bit more of a painterly look this way, and less of a marker look. And the pigment moves around a little bit more because it is a little bit wetter. But um, if you're using a water brush, I will tell you it will feed more water in as you're working and you may get blobs. So if you, if you, um, I love to use a water brush when I'm painting, like if I'm just kind of doing a greeting card and a freehanding it. But when I'm doing a stamped piece, sometimes the, uh, the water, I get too much in it 
it kind of um, takes a while to dry and it um, it can be a little difficult. But I like to turn my paper so it's comfortable for me to for me to get in there with the brush. So feel free to do that. And it's really, you know, it's whatever you get used to. If you get used to a brush, it's not going to feel like it's out of control, but it can until you get to that point. I'm going to rinse that off. I feel like I get a little bit too much pigment to fade that to the edge. There we go. There we go. All right, so it's completely, you know, up to you, whatever you prefer, but I just wanted to show you that option because a lot of people don't think about using a... Um, uh, bl a watercolor blending pen. Now you know what? I'm kind of curious. I think I have, I have a um, alcohol blending pen. I'm just gonna see if this will work because I had mentioned in my last post that don't use a alcohol pen. But I figured I would try it. Now I might be ruining. I hope I'm not ruining this pen. So let's just see. You know what? The alcohol pen works too. Um, works quite well actually. I'm wondering though if I'm going to be damaging it. That's my only thing about... You know what though? I don't think it blends it quite as well and I think it's going to mess up the ink that I have underneath. So I guess it depends on what you stamp it with. I think it almost dries a little too quickly. Um, we'll see when that dries because it's... You can see it also makes it bleed through your paper if you use an alcohol pen. So I'm going to scribble that off. I don't think I'm going to do that too much because I have the watercolor pens and I'm afraid of clogging the nib here on this marker so um, I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore but I just wanted to just try it just right off the cuff just to see if it worked um, and I'm not really recommending it I do think just a plain brush with water is gonna work a little bit better for you um, and I do think it might clog up the the pen nib so I just wanted to experiment there on the fly this is one of my famous unedited crafting videos you like so much <laughs> It's so funny, I'm always like, oh my gosh, I didn't edit that, it's so long, and then those will be the ones that I get the comments on, like, it's just like hanging out with you, Lindsay. <laughs> well, I'm glad, because I feel like I'm hanging out with you too right now. Alright, yeah, I do feel like that's less vivid, the one that I just did with the alcohol pen, than the, uh, than the others, so... I was just curious, I was just curious as what what it would do. And then I am gonna rinse off my brush, I just want to kind of drag a little bit of paint onto this. These little areas there. And now let's do the leaves. My brush isn't that dirty, so I'm just gonna go in there and just liquefy that. I have also found that, um, so I'm working on a clipboard right now, but before I was working on my, when I did this one, the original one, I was working on my felt mat that's on my table that I like because it, um, it photographs really well. Um, if you work on a nice hard surface you're going to get more pigment onto your paper and your colors will be more vivid. Now I showed you this technique before but I'm going to do it again just because I forgot to color in that. I forgot to add these other colors onto that um, leaf there. I'm just going to use my brush to pick up some of that color and I'm going to just paint it in. You know so you can always do that if you've already wet your paper and you you can't you don't have as much color as you wanted to just do that and that way you won't end up with any awkward hard edged scribbly lines on your artwork okay Get these little guys here all right now i want to put the background in before i okay so this is this is just watercolor pencil um, and so that's watercolor pencil with color pencil on top. I just want to show you these side by side at this point. Okay? Now what I want to do is put a background in and my favorite way to do a background honestly would be to use watercolor paints and these are those inexpensive watercolor paints. Use whatever you want. You could even use a wet brush against the tip of your of your pencil. Um, it's completely up to you. I'm going to go in with a slightly larger brush though and I'm going to just kind of wet around the edges. Now my cat has I freshen my water bucket all the time and I have a very naughty cat that likes to get up and drink out of my water bucket. And I also notice it evaporates up here so much quicker than it does downstairs in my studio. Also if you have any areas where you've gotten outside of the lines, this background will tidy it up. And I want a kind of a rough edge watercolor background here so I'm just kind of, I know the paint is going to go where my paper is wet so I'm just kind of making the little rough edge with my brush. 
Okay, I'm going to go back to the other brush that I had for actually adding the color. I want to use the cerulean blue, which is this um, kind of more opaque blue. My, my paints haven't even dried all the way out yet. Um, and this has been in this palette for about four days, I'd say. I'm alright with keeping it semi-moist, though, because those are student colors, and I know they're going to um, they're going to crack when they dry, because I didn't add any glycerin to them. So if they stay in that semi-moist state, I think I'll probably be better off. So I'm being very careful as I go around with the uh, cerulean and I'm kind of letting it fade out as I get further away from the center. Kind of think about if there was that cluster of flowers on your table, just laying down on your table, then it would be more shadowed in the center where they, you know, where the foliage is thicker. You have a lot more control with the student paints because they don't, they have more fillers in it and um, I think they have like less gum arabic or maybe less glycerin or something but the, the fillers that are in there keep the paint um, a little more stationary so it's not going to float around on you so much which is a good thing if you're doing a stamped image and also the fact that you know they're non-toxic versus a lot of the artist pigments that are toxic you don't have to worry so much about your kids using them or your cat coming along and sneaking a drink out of your water bowl before you get a chance to dump it. My naughty naughty cat. So I had one cat sneak outside when uh, the animals were, were just being naughty in tandem this morning and I'm watching the kids get on the bus, I could do every morning, and I hear crunch 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 and I look over and my dog is had the, somebody left the, uh, the the lid off the treat the treat container which has like a, you know those little kind of like milk bone biscuits or just like you know the little biscuits and um and I'm hearing crunch 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 and that dog has her head in the treat box and eating the treats like they're um like they're her dinner and so I you know go go shut up the, the box and then I go to to open the door to say bye to the kids and then the cat sneaks out who's you know an indoor cat Oh my gosh, they've all got that, you know, spring naughtiness, I think. They're all feeling frisky. Let me get away with something. And I'm turning my work around as I work because it is so much easier to get in there when you can kind of get the tip of that brush right in up against your work. All right, I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna pause it because I wanna show you the colored pencil overlay too. Okay, so I wanted to show you just how this is going to look when we, if we add some other colors on top. I wanted a brighter yellow in the middle, so I grabbed one of my brighter Spectrum colors. This is 13, and there's not an equivalent in the um, Prima range as far as I know. You could also use watercolors to do that, just to pop those colors a little bit. And um, I grabbed a purple, it's a little bit richer. This is an 83 versus the 80 that I used over there. I'm just gonna make sure I'm working on a dry, a dry flower, because my paper is a little damp. Okay, and I can bring that out. And then I can go over with, this is the 32, the same shade of pink I used, except it's, a, it's in the uh, colored pencil line from Spectrum Noir. But the colors match really well. And you can see how much more deeper that petal is next to the other one. So if you like that look, you can go ahead and keep going around um, on your petals and leaves. So here I'm using a, a darker green. This is a green that can be found in watercolor in the spring and fall on the uh, scenic root line. And then this is the green that we just used for the medium value. And you know you can just kind of layer it up. Now I want to share a really quick tip with you. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, for tearing your edges so you get a nice soft edge like that but it's you know torn equally this is a quilting ruler and it's really great for quilting I just realized uh, but it's also really good for making your edges you know lining up your edges and tearing them really well so I can kind of figure out how I want this squared up and then I can tear against it and after you get that first edge torn then you can line up one of the grids along that edge and tear the next one. So that way you'll end up with a, um, a perfect 
torn border. So there you have it. I just wanted to share some of these ideas with you because um, I found them to be really helpful. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.